in an alternate universe, things played out not so similar. What may have been a long, thorough journey for one Spider-Man could have been a horrific nightmare for another. This is a Spider-Man horror story. We open our story on a stormy Halloween night. It was eerie, dark and quiet. It had been a week since Spider-Man's latest crusade against the infamous Sinister Six. He had taken some time to rest and heal as he focused on his regular life as Peter Parker. Peter made his way to the bugle where Jameson was waiting for him. He told him to sit, there was a job for him. With Eddie on the lizard case, you're our only option. And it doesn't include that web-headed menace, but it could potentially be something big. Peter would ask what it was, as Jameson said he can't really reveal much, but he's heard rumblings of a selected amount of disturbances out in the woods in California. California? I can't go. My aunt May's sick. Jameson says with what he's paying him, his aunt May's hospital bills will no longer be a problem. Five grand for three days. There's a cabin being booked for him near where the disturbances are. All he has to do is take pictures of anything remotely out of the ordinary. Peter paused. Five grand's a lot of money, and it would help paying for May's bills. But I can't leave her. Or maybe MJ could look after her. I wouldn't want to put all this on her, though. Jameson would ask what his answer was. Peter took a second. I'll take it. Jameson said, of course you will. The cabin's already been booked. Your flight's tomorrow morning. Robbie will send you the tickets. We go to Peter's home as Aunt May was laid out in bed. Peter sat there in the chair beside her as he told her he was going away for a few days, but he's going to ask Mary Jane if she can look after her whilst he's gone. May was scared. She feared she might die, and without him here, she'll not have anyone by her side. Peter tried to reassure her that the money he's getting is enough to pay for all the bills. Peter grabbed her hand and told her it was going to be okay. We got to Peter parking as he made his way to the airport. He had his bags checked before he eventually got on the plane as he was on his way to California. But he kept thinking about May. He wanted her to be safe while he was away. Even though he knows he needs this trip, he still worries. A few hours later, the plane would touch the ground in Cali and Peter was trying to find his way around. Jameson left barely any instructions, so it became a struggle for Peter to know where he was going. He found a cab that was willing to take him. As he got in and told the driver where he was going, he got stared down through the rearview mirror. He told Parker that's a dangerous place and he would advise against it. Peter said he had a job to do. The driver sighed. Your funeral, kid. It started to seep into night as Peter arrived at the woods, but they didn't go in. The driver said this is as far as they'll go. What's in those woods? He doesn't even want to know. Peter paid the driver. He turned around and pleaded for him not to go in there. Peter would ask what had him so spooked. The driver had no reply. Something evil lurked in those woods. Whoever sent him on this job must really hate you. Peter mumbled. Sure looks that way. The cab driver gave Peter his card. Don't make the same mistake a lot of people around here make. If you get into any trouble, call me. I'll pick you up and get you away from this place as soon as possible. Peter would thank him as he opened the door. The second he stepped foot out of the car, the driver sped off, clearly not wanting to be in these woods. Peter would have no idea where to go as he started trekking through the muddy woods. Slowly but surely, it got darker and darker and Peter was getting tired. He heard so many strange noises, almost human-like, growls and hisses in the distance. Peter was officially spooked. His spider sense flashed as he felt something watching him. He clenched his fist as he continued walking. Before long, he arrived at the cabin. It was old, worn down and moldy, showcasing Jameson's cheapness. Peter placed the key in the door as it slowly creaked open. Peter was horrified to see where he'd be spending the next few nights, alone. He placed his bags in the bedroom as he searched the cabin. He stumbled upon a book of witchcraft. As he flipped through, he saw a blood stain imprinted on the back as he placed it down. He continued snooping around the cabin as he saw one door which had been barricaded shut. It must have been the door to the basement. Peter realized the electricity was off and usually old buildings stored a circuit board in the basement. So he needed to get in. Stupidly, Peter broke the locks into the basement as a horrific smell hit his nostrils. It smelled like rotten meat. He grabbed his phone torch as he slowly walked down to the cellar. He shined his light around the room as we got jump scared by a deer head which had been left in storage. Peter screamed. 
As he did, he heard something move in the background. He turned behind him, seeing a hunter's equipment. Things like crossbows and guns. But they were damaged, unable to be used. Looking further, Peter found this box. It was almost as big as him. The wood was polished, but over time collected dust. Peter would try opening the box, but it was locked airtight. He eventually found the circuit board. He flicked a few switches as eventually the light switched on. Peter was terrified to see the amount of blood splattered across the walls. He was almost sick. What the hell happened here? He asked himself. Freaked out, he ran back upstairs and slammed the door shut, now knowing what the lock was on there for. He wanted to leave. He was bewildered. But he knew he didn't want to go outside. Not till morning. He tried to sleep so the morning came quicker, so he could get the hell out of here. But the weirdness just continued to get worse as Peter heard footsteps in the cabin. He saw a shadow along his wall. He grabbed the covers tightly as he heard what felt like nails scraping across the walls. Peter was undoubtedly scared. He shouted for whatever was out there to go away. As a loud banging noise repeatedly smashed against his door, Peter leaped out of bed to deal with whoever this was. As he saw nothing, the cabin was empty. As Peter turned around, however, there was an entity. Tall, bloody, not human in origin. It grabbed a hold of Peter as its long nails dug into his skin. Peter tried to fight back, but his powers against it were useless. Peter stared into this entity's eyes, seeing nothing but darkness as he tried fighting back. The two tussled as Peter ran back to the basement, hoping to find some kind of weapon, but he was running out of time. He looked back at the big box as he tried to lift off the lid. The power was then cut as Peter was left in darkness. He managed to open the lid as he climbed inside to hide from whatever was out there. It was pitch black, so Peter grabbed his phone light. We were horrified to see a dead, rotted body that Peter was laid on. This giant box was a coffin. Peter kicked and screamed, but was unable to open the lid. He was trapped in there. The entity scraped its fingernails across the coffin before it stopped. Peter breathed heavily. His phone light flickered. He tried fixing it, when as he did, he saw the entity was in the box with him. He screamed as it cut to the outside of the box, not knowing what really happened. A few weeks later, Peter Parker and Spider-Man's death was reported by the Bugle, claiming he had been, in quotes, an accident that had taken his life. Mary Jane was mortified as the entire world grieved Spider-Man. Mary Jane was the only one to grieve Peter Parker. The short ended, fade into black so suddenly.